Yes. Parliamentary Committee approves the removal of edge limit as FUFA unveils new cranes court. A very good evening and welcome to News Tonight. It's me, Michael Jordan Lukomwa, with Elizabeth Nakagon here uh, to start the weekend with this bulletin. In our first story, President Yori Museveni has said that failure to crystallize the concept of the National Army has been the major cause of insecurity in many African countries. The President noted that failure to undertake what a national army should entail has largely made many countries outsource security from the United Nations instead of sourcing securities from within. President Museven made the remarks at the commissioning ceremony of officer cadets that was held yesterday at the Uganda Military Academy, Kabamba, in Mwende District. After 53 weeks of training, a total of 256 Ugandan officers were passed out, including 228 males and 28 females. There were also 57 Somali officers who were commissioned at the same ceremony. I, General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, do hereby commission you to be officers of the Uganda People's Defense Forces at the ranks of second lieutenants, lieutenants, and the captains. May God help you. Finally, there are officers now, commissioned officers. President Museveni explained that for any army to be successful, it must have an ideological and patriotic stand, be skilled in warfare in all its branches, and that the soldiers ought to be ready to take risks that are part of the national defense plan. Army is like a surgeon. The surgeon uses a knife to cut, but he cuts in a, a, a purposeful way. Don't just cut any part you want to cut. No, 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 no. You only go and cut the part which is sick. Otherwise, if you just cut anywhere, anyhow, then you are no longer a surgeon, you are, you are a butcher. We use violence, but the violence we, 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 we use is purposeful, disciplined, and limited, limited to to the target. The president said that Uganda People's Defense Forces, UPDF, is a good army that has done so many good things, even without enough resources. You must be brave. Soldiers should not, should not fear. Fear taking uh, uh, risks, if the risks are part of the plan of, of the defense of the country. President Museven said that government would continue to build the armed forces comprising the land forces, air force and marines. He commended the marine forces for arresting fishermen who catch young fish. Now that job will be easier. The job of guarding the fisheries will be easier once we consolidate the development of the marine force, the way we have, we have consolidated the development of the land forces and of the air force. Regarding infrastructure, he said that government would tarmac the road from Rusasira through Kasambia, Chakasa, Nkoni, Makole, Lwejere, Lutusi in Sembavule. The deputy commander of the Defense Forces, Lieutenant General Wilson Imbadi, commended President Museveni for his leadership that has made the army grow and achieve its mission as enshrined in Article 209 of the Ugandan Constitution. And of course this is to enable us to create an environment that would support the programs of social and economic transformation and achieving vision 
the Somali Defense Minister, Abdul Rashid Abdullahi Mohammed, thanked the UPDF and the President for the support toward fighting of the Al Shabaab terrorists. He does not segregate, he loves us as once. This is the President who has ennobled us to move freely in Uganda from corner to corner. There is no any curfew, let it be day or night, movement is free. And that is what we really think in Somalia to be one day, one time. And Mr. President, kindly we request from you, go ahead, double that effort, please. President Museveni later presented awards to Officer Cadet Apio Fiona, the best student overall, Cadet Officer Nansu Margaret, the best in class, Cadet Officer Nuagila Alex, the best in field, Cadet Officer Abdul Mohammed Mile, the best fraternal student, and Cadet Officer St. Idison, the most disciplined student. I'm Dennis Blair Kalanzi in Kabamba. Congratulations to the officers. Meanwhile, President Yuri Museveni has this Friday hosted Ugandans to a dinner at State House and TV. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today as a nation, as a people who acknowledge you as our God, to give you thanks. We thank you for this special time when we come together to lift up our hearts in worship and gratitude. As we look back, we know that we have so much to be thankful for. The gift of life, the gift of peace, the gift of food, and nourishment, and good health. Whatever a man sows, that's what he reaps. We in Africa and Uganda should remember this. And normally we take stands which some people don't like or don't understand. But for us, we, we don't mind. The narrow path, we always take it if it becomes necessary. So some years ago, uh, we took a stand in the government, uh, especially in 2006, where I called the cabinet and the NRM caucus, and we had to restructure our budget and uh, to suppress some of the expenditures and uh, emphasize others. In particular, we emphasized the, the, the road sector and, the, and electricity and defense, the army. His Excellency President Yuri Museveni addressing the Ugandans that gathered at State House in Debe this afternoon. Now, Prime Minister Dr. Hakan Rugunda has called upon staff at the Office of the Prime Minister to lead by example in terms of enhancing efficiency, performance and speed of implementation. He said this will improve service delivery in the country and also enable the country to achieve its middle income status by the year 2020. He was at the end of year staff party of the Office of the Prime Minister's staff at Hotel Africana in Kampala.
the image and reputation of the office of the Prime Minister has greatly improved. And that's called upon the staff of his office to continue working hard and aiming high to achieve the desired result. He also commended the various departments in his office for their commitment to implement and deliver government programs efficiently under the technical leadership of the Permanent Secretary, Christine Guatunde Chintu. Let me urge everybody to even do more work. I think the year that is happening will be for accelerated implementation. We, in the Office of the Prime Minister, are coordinating the other departments but we must lead by example. We must lead by doing the work faster, more efficiently, so that we can have the legitimacy to others and give them and with them so that they can do their work better. The UN Resident Coordinator and UNDP Resident Representative Rosa Malango on behalf of the development partners highlighted a number of achievements made by the Office of the Prime Minister in 2017 such as the successful Solidarity Summit on Refugees that Uganda hosted in June. She also commended the Office of the Prime Minister for its commitment to working with the development partners in the country to ensure that Uganda achieves its goals as set in the National Development Plan 2 and Vision 2040. And it was the first time ever that a United Nations held a summit on refugees in a host country in the global south. So I'm particularly delighted to be part of the today because it not only did we raise $524 million to Paris, Uganda. And not only did we create new partnerships with countries and companies who never would have invested in this district otherwise, but recently the UN has decided to adopt the Uganda Solidarity Summit as a model to mobilize resources for other countries affected by refugees in motivation to Uganda. Malango pledged UN's commitment to continue working with the Office of the Prime Minister. The head of public service, John Mitala, called upon the staff of the Office of the Prime Minister to be grateful to God for enabling them to work productively. He also said the Office of the Prime Minister staff should be grateful to their families for taking care and supporting them. The Permanent Secretary, Office of the Prime Minister, Christine Guwatu Dechintu, noted that the Office of the Prime Minister thrives on communication, coordination, and collaboration within the various departments at the office. She thanked all the departments for working hard to ensure that the office delivers on the different government projects and programs. OPM has grown exponentially. The portfolio has grown from 149 to 590 billion portfolio. This is good. That's a very big achievement. That's great mobilization. And I would like to thank the team from the Refugees Department for a job very well done. The Solidarity Summit, which we held this year in June, crowned it all. And with your leadership, right under the Prime Minister, we held a very, very successful summit. And I would like to thank you very much for your leadership and thank the UN Resident Coordinator in addition for a very good job that was done together with the ministers responsible for refugees. Thank you and thank you very much. Retired public service officials who worked with the Office of the Prime Minister were also recognized and awarded at the party. <laughs> Dennis.
General Moses Ali, they are taking to the floor, the evening that was. The Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee of Parliament has endorsed a proposal to edit the presidential age limit out of the Constitution. According to the 105-page report, the committee recommends that the amendment of all articles in the Constitution as uh, proposed by Igara West Member of Parliament, Raphael Majezi, goes on. The committee, chaired by West Wudam, a South Member of Parliament, Jacob Obotho, both is also recommending that the lower age limit is adjusted to persons aged 18 with no limits uh, on their age. <laughs> According to the committee, age as a qualification for election is not useful in limiting unsuitable persons from attaining the office of president. The articles to be amended include Article 103, Subsection 3, 7, and 104, Subsection 2, 3, 6, that talks about the election of the president and challenging of a presidential election, respectively. The other amendments include Article 102B and Article 183, subsection 2B, to scrap presidential and district chairpersons' age limits, respectively. 20 out of 29 members of the Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee supported the amendment. In their justification to delete paragraph B from Article 102, which bars persons below the age of 35 years and above the age of 75 from standing as candidates in a presidential election, the committee report outlines five reasons why the article in its current form should be amended. The report says that Article 102B is contrary to the spirit and objective 2 of the national objectives and directives principles of the state policy and Article 1 of the Constitution of Uganda. The committee also argues that Article 102B of the Constitution has the effect of marginalization against the youth and elderly by limiting them from offering their candidature for president. The committee in its report also states that Article 102B is contrary to the international best practices in as far as it imposes age restrictions on presidential candidates, contrary to international legal instruments and evidence from other countries. The committee cites countries such as Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Ghana, US, UK and Canada among others that do not have upper age limit. The committee also observed that Article 102B is redundant in light to Article 1071C of the Constitution. However, the committee recommends the reinstatement and entrenchment of Article 1052 on presidential term limits in the Constitution that was scrapped off in 2005. The committee's decision to reinstate term limits is informed by the fact that even among countries without age restrictions as a qualification for election as president, most of such countries have got term limits on persons seeking the office of president. Parliament will sit on Monday to debate the bill. Two-thirds majority of members of parliament are required to pass the bill. Samuel Senono, UBC News. Let us wait uh, to have what will happen on Monday. But meanwhile, Uganda Broadcasting Corporation has contributed greatly to increasing the units of blood at the Uganda Blood Transfusion through the exercise of blood donation in the corporation's health camp that ended today. While donating blood, the managing director, UBC Winston Agaba, urged members of the public to donate blood since it cannot be manufactured. Agaba said that the camp is social corporate responsibility of UBC, where it is giving back to its listeners and viewers during the festive season. a noble cause for each and every Ugandan, each and every human being because uh, blood is one of those uh, components in life that cannot be manufactured. Blood drive, I think, to us is quite important because blood is one of those components in life that cannot be manufactured. And what a better way to say thank you to Ugandans uh, by all UBC workers who have been able to donate blood and as I speak, I've uh, been reliably informed that over 100 units have so far been uh, picked, 100 plus and we expect hopefully to hit the mark of 200 plus by the end of the day. I've gotten free yellow fever vaccination. This initiative to carry out this exercise is so good. It has put Uganda Blood Transfusion Service a step ahead. Actually, we have realized 
more units of blood. There is a very big difference from the usual days in terms of the units of blood collected per day. So when UBC came in, we have actually made a difference of around 50 and above units of blood to add on the daily collections per day. Managing Director UBC Winston Agaba. Victims of the Lord Resistance Army Mastermind and Insurgency are appealing for support to enable them to live normal lives from the past. Some of the girls turned women abducted from Luala Girls Senior Secondary School in Kabila Maido District say that they have never received counseling despite programs charged with such mandate. Pain inflicted on victims of the Lone Resistance Army during the 20-year insurgency remains fresh in the minds of the population, even though guns fell silent a decade ago. Tears of former abductees raped and tortured in captivity is never far from faces of the victims whenever they tell of the Bush ordeal. The situation of these girls coming from the districts of Teso abducted by the LRA rebels from Luala Girls Senior Secondary School in Kabira Maido, is worsened by what they term as unfair treatment in communities and inadequate support by government. As I came back, I'm facing very many problems at home with this side. Uh, this my mom who's taking the responsibility of this boy, but people, the clan members, they hate him, they don't want to see him at home because that they can bring the behaviors from the bush up to here in their, in their clan. So I'm facing very many challenges at home. For the girls who have managed to go through the trauma, all the demands is for the government to provide counseling for the rest of the girls to allow them to come into reality with the terms. I wish you had come with a counsellor because we have never gone through some counselling for sure. I don't know how you're going to handle these girls, but I wish you had come with a counsellor at least to, I don't know, to talk to them. Because these girls, I know there are problems. We sit together, they have problems. Those who are HIV positive, they fear to tell people, but for us, we know them. And above all, they appeal for special economic and social programs for the group. We are requesting that you elevate these girls, those ones who are able to go for livelihood skill training, they are ready for it. Those ones who are ready to begin up, maybe they have their own experience of something that they can be able to do, start up capital for them. State Minister for Northern Uganda Rehabilitation, Grace Freedom Kuchwin, gave an ear to the plight of the group committing support. So my very first assignment, Kao, I'm going to ask the CDO to come down and meet these girls as a group and help them to come up with a meaningful development project. Because you cannot ask me, send us to school and I say yes here. I say, who am I sending to school? Which school is it? How much does it cost? Those answers I cannot find here. It is mind-boggling that there are groups of the former abductees who have not been rehabilitated, whereas government injects billions of shillings for the region under programs like Northern Uganda Social Action Fund and Peace Recovery and Development Plan. The fateful day the rebels raided Luala Girls Senior Secondary School in 2003 had an estimated 100 girls abducted. Onyango Jackson. Reporting for ABC TV in Kabera Maido. Very touching story there. Thank you so much, Jackson Onyango. Now, political leaders in Kampala have boycotted their end of year council meeting. How, why, we're going to see that when we return from the break. Yes, Parliamentary Committee approves the removal of edge limit as FUFA unveils new cranes court. A very good evening and welcome to News Tonight. It's me, Michael Jordan Lukomwa, with Elizabeth Nakagon here uh, to start the weekend with this bulletin. In our first story, President Yori Museveni has said 
that failure to crystallize the concept of the national army has been the major cause of insecurity in many African countries. The president noted that failure to undertake what a national army should entail has largely made many countries outsource security from the United Nations instead of sourcing securities from within. President Museven made the remarks at the commissioning ceremony of officer cadets that was held yesterday at the Uganda Military Academy, Kabamba, in Mwende District. After 53 weeks of training, a total of 256 Ugandan officers were passed out, including 228 males and 28 females. There were also 57 Somali officers who were commissioned at the same ceremony. I, General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, do hereby commission you to be officers of the Ugandan People's Defense Forces at the ranks of second lieutenants, lieutenants, and captains. May God help you. Finally, there are officers now, commissioned officers. President Museveni explained that for any army to be successful, it must have an ideological and patriotic stand, be skilled in warfare in all its branches, and that the soldiers ought to be ready to take risks that are part of the national defense plan. Army is like a surgeon. The surgeon uses a knife to cut, but he cuts in a, a, a purposeful way. Don't just cut any part you want to cut. No, 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 no. You only go and cut the part which is sick. Otherwise, if you just cut anywhere, anyhow, then you are no longer a surgeon, you are, you are a butcher. We use violence, but the violence we, 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 we use is purposeful, disciplined, and limited, limited to to the target. The president said that Uganda People's Defense Forces, UPDF, is a good army that has done so many good things even without enough resources. You must be brave. Soldiers should not, should not fear. Fear taking uh, uh, risks if the risks are part of the plan of, of the defense of the country. President Museven said that government would continue to build the armed forces, comprising the land forces, air force and marines. He commended the marine forces for arresting fishermen who catch young fish. Now that job will be easier. The job of guarding the fisheries will be easier once we consolidate the development of the marine force, the way we have, we have consolidated the development of the land forces and of the air force. Regarding infrastructure, he said that government would tarmac the road from Rusasira through Kasambia, Chakasa, Nkoni, Makole, Lwejere, Lutusi in Sembavule. The deputy commander of the Defense Forces, Lieutenant General Wilson Imbadi, commended President Museveni for his leadership that has made the army grow and achieve its mission as enshrined in Article 209 of the Ugandan Constitution. And of course this is to enable us to create an environment that would support the programs of social and economic transformation and achieving vision 2040. The Somali Defense Minister, Abdul Rashid Abdullahi Mohammed, thanked the UPDF and the President for the support toward fighting of the Al-Shabaab terrorists. He does not segregate, he loves us as once. This is the President who has ennobled us 
to move freely in Uganda from corner to corner. There is no any curfew. Let it be day or night. Movement is free. And that is what we really think in Somalia to be one day, one time. And Mr. President, kindly we request from you, go ahead, double that effort, please. President Museveni later presented awards to Officer Cadet Apio Fiona, the best student overall, Cadet Officer Nansu Buga Margaret, the best in class, Cadet Officer Nuagila Alex, the best in field, Cadet Officer Abdul Mohamed Mile, the best fraternal student, and Cadet Officer St. Idison, the most disciplined student. I'm Dennis Blair Kalanzi in Kabamba. Congratulations to the officers. Meanwhile, President Yuri Museveni has this Friday hosted Ugandans to a dinner at State House in TV. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today as a nation, as a people who acknowledge you as our God, to give you thanks. We thank you for this special time when we come together to lift up our hearts in worship and gratitude. As we look back, we know that we have so much to be thankful for. The gift of life, the gift of peace, the gift of food, and nourishment, and good health. Whatever a man sows, that's what he reaps. We in Africa and Uganda should remember this. And normally we take stands, which some people don't like or don't understand. But for us, we, we don't mind. The narrow path, we always take it, if it becomes necessary. So some years ago, uh, we took a stand in the government, uh, especially in 2006, where I called the cabinet and the NRM caucus, and we had to restructure our budget and uh, to suppress some of the expenditures and uh, emphasize others. In particular, we emphasized the, the, the road sector and, the, and electricity and defense, the army. His Excellency President Yuri Museveni addressing the Ugandans that gathered at State House in Tebe this afternoon. Now, Prime Minister Dr. Hakan Rugunda has called upon staff at the office of the Prime Minister to lead by example in terms of enhancing efficiency, performance and speed of implementation. He said this will improve service delivery in the country and also enable the country to achieve its middle income status by the year 2020. He was at the end of your staff party of the Office of the Prime Minister's staff at Hotel Africana in Kampala.
He also commended the various departments in his office for their commitment to implement and deliver government programs efficiently under the technical leadership of the Permanent Secretary, Christine Guatunde Chintu. Let me ask everybody to even do more work. I think the year that is happening will be for accelerated implementation. We, in the office of the Prime Minister, are coordinating the other departments but we must lead by example. We must lead by doing the work faster, more efficiently, so that we can have the legitimacy to others and give them and with them so that they can do their work uh, better. The UN Resident Coordinator and UNDP Resident Representative Rosa Malango, on behalf of the development partners, highlighted a number of achievements made by the Office of the Prime Minister in 2017, such as the successful Solidarity Summit on Refugees that Uganda hosted in June. She also commended the Office of the Prime Minister for its commitment to working with the development partners in the country to ensure that Uganda achieves its goals as set in the National Development Plan 2 and Vision 2040. It was the first time ever that a United Nations held a summit on refugees in a host country in the global south. So I'm particularly delighted to inform you today and to all our guests present that not only did we raise $524 million prior to here in Uganda. And not only did we create new partnerships with countries and companies who never would have invested in this district otherwise, but recently the UN has decided to adopt the Uganda Solidarity Summit as a model to mobilize resources for other countries affected by refugees in motivation to Uganda. Malango pledged UN's commitment to continue working with the Office of the Prime Minister. The head of public service, John Mitala, called upon the staff of the Office of the Prime Minister to be grateful to God for enabling them to work productively. He also said the Office of the Prime Minister staff should be grateful to their families for taking care and supporting them. The Permanent Secretary, Office of the Prime Minister, Christine Guwatu Dechintu, noted that the Office of the Prime Minister thrives on communication, coordination and collaboration within the various departments at the office. She thanked all the departments for working hard to ensure that the office delivers on the different government projects and programs. OPM has grown exponentially. The portfolio has grown from 149 to 590 billion portfolio. This is good. That's a very big achievement. That's great mobilization. And I would like to thank the team from the Refugees Department for a job very well done. The Solidarity Summit, which we held this year in June, crowned it all. And with your leadership, right Honorable Prime Minister, we held a very, very successful summit. And I would like to thank you very much for your leadership and thank the UN Resident Coordinator in addition for a very good job that was done together with the ministers responsible for refugees. Thank you and thank you very much. Retired public service officials who worked with the office of the Prime Minister were also recognized and awarded at the party. <laughs>
mm, General Moses Ali there taking to the floor the evening that was. The Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee of Parliament has endorsed a proposal to edit the presidential age limit out of the Constitution. According to the 105-page report, the committee recommends that the amendment of all articles in the Constitution as uh, proposed by Igara West Member of Parliament, Raphael Majezi, goes on. The committee, chaired by West Wudama South Member of Parliament, Jacob Obotho, both is also recommending that the lower age limit is adjusted to persons aged 18 with no limits uh, on their age. According to the committee, age as a qualification for election is not useful in limiting unsuitable persons from attaining the office of president. The articles to be amended include Article 103, Subsection 3, 7, and 104, Subsection 2, 3, 6, that talks about the election of the president and challenging of a presidential election, respectively. The other amendments include Article 102B and Article 183, Subsection 2B, to scrap presidential and district chairpersons age limits, respectively. 20 out of 29 members of the Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee supported the amendment. In their justification to delete paragraph B from Article 102, which bars persons below the age of 35 years and above the age of 75 from standing as candidates in a presidential election, the committee report outlines five reasons why the article in its current form should be amended. The report says that Article 102B is contrary to the spirit and objective two of the national objectives and directives principles of the state policy and Article 1 of the Constitution of Uganda. The committee also argues that Article 102B of the Constitution has the effect of marginalization against the youth and elderly by limiting them from offering their candidature for president. The committee in its report also states that Article 102B is contrary to the international best practices in as far as it imposes age restrictions on presidential candidates, contrary to international legal instruments and evidence from other countries. The committee cites countries such as Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Ghana, US, UK and Canada among others that do not have upper age limit. The committee also observed that Article 102B is redundant in light to Article 1071C of the Constitution. However, the committee recommends the reinstatement and entrenchment of Article 1052 on presidential term limits in the Constitution that was scrapped off in 2005. The committee's decision to reinstate term limits is informed by the fact that even among countries without age restrictions as a qualification for election as president, most of such countries have got term limits on persons seeking the office of president. Parliament will sit on Monday to debate the bill. Two-thirds majority of members of parliament are required to pass the bill. Samuel Senono, UBC News. Bis Let us wait uh, to have what will happen on Monday. But meanwhile, Uganda Broadcasting Corporation has contributed greatly to increasing the units of blood at the Uganda Blood Transfusion through the exercise of blood donation in the corporation's health camp that ended today. While donating blood, the managing director, UBC Winston Agaba, urged members of the public to donate blood since it cannot be manufactured. Agaba said that the camp is social corporate responsibility of UBC, where it is giving back to its listeners and viewers during the festive season. a noble cause for each and every Ugandan, each and every human being because blood is one of those uh, components in life that cannot be manufactured. Blood drive, I think, to us is quite important because blood is one of those components in life that cannot be manufactured. And what a better way to say thank you to Ugandans uh, by all UBC workers who have been able to donate blood and as I speak, I've uh, been reliably informed that over 100 units have so far been uh, picked, 100 plus and we expect hopefully to hit the mark of 200 plus by the end of the day. I've gotten free yellow fever vaccination. This initiative to carry out this exercise is so good. It has put Uganda Blood Transfusion Service a step ahead. Actually, we have realized more units of blood. There is a very big difference from the usual days in terms of the units of blood collected per day. So when UBC came with it, we have actually made a difference of around 50 and above units of blood to add on the daily collections. 
Managing Director UBC Winston Agaba. Victims of the Lord Resistance Army Masterminded Insurgency are appealing for support to enable them to live normal lives from the past. Some of the girls turned women abducted from Luala Girls Senior Secondary School in Kabilamaido District say that they have never received counseling despite programs charged with such mandate. Pain inflicted on victims of the Lone Resistance Army during the 20-year insurgency remains fresh in the minds of the population, even though guns fell silent a decade ago. Tears of former abductees raped and tortured in captivity is never far from faces of the victims whenever they tell of the Bush ordeal. The situation of these girls coming from the districts of Teso abducted by the LRA rebels from Luala Girls Senior Secondary School in Kabira Maido is worsened by what they term as unfair treatment in communities and inadequate support by government. As I came back, I'm facing very many problems at home with this side. This is my mom who is taking the responsibility of this boy, but people, the clan members, they hate him, they don't want to see him at home because that they can bring the behaviors from the bush up to here in their, in their clan. So I'm facing very many challenges at home. For the girls who have managed to go through the trauma, all the demands is for the government to provide counseling for the rest of the girls to allow them to come into reality with the terms. I wish you had come with a counselor because we have never gone through some counseling for sure. I don't know how you're going to handle these girls, but I wish you had come with a counselor at least to, I don't know, to talk to them because these girls, I know their problems, we sit together, they have problems. Those who are HIV positive, they fear to tell people, but for us, we know them. And above all, they appeal for special economic and social programs for the group. Yes, we are requesting that you elevate these girls, those ones who are able to go for livelihood skill training, they are ready for it. Those ones who are ready to begin up, maybe they have their own experience of something that they can be able to do, start up capital for them. State Minister for Northern Uganda Rehabilitation, Grace Freedom Kuchwin, gave an ear to the plight of the group committing support. So my very first assignment, Kao, I'm going to ask the CDO to come down and meet these girls as a group and help them to come up with a meaningful development project. Because you cannot ask me, send us to school and I say yes here. I say, who am I sending to school? Which school is it? How much does it cost? Those answers I cannot find here. It is mind-boggling that there are groups of the former abductees who have not been rehabilitated, whereas government injects billions of shillings for the region under programs like Northern Uganda Social Action Fund and Peace Recovery and Development Plan. The fateful day the rebels raided Luala Girls Senior Secondary School in 2003 had an estimated 100 girls abducted. Onyango Jackson. Reporting for ABC TV in Kabera Maido. Very touching story there. Thank you so much, Jackson Onyango. Now, political leaders in Kampala have boycotted their end of year council meeting. How, why, we're going to see that when we return from the break. Thank you so much for making us your choice. This is News Tonight here on UBC TV. Kampala political leaders have this Friday boycotted the end of year council meeting. That way, the Lord Mayor Arias Lukwaga adjourned the council meeting due to lack of quorum.
council meeting meant to highlight Kampala Capital City Authority achievements, challenges of 2017, and the way forward come 2018 was this Friday adjourned due to lack of quorum. Kampala Lord Mayor Elias Rukwago patiently waited for councillors to come for the council meeting to no avail until he decided to have it postponed to early next year. Because we are 36, including myself and my deputy. So you can imagine we failed to realize quorum of only 18 members. And this is the capital city. Some councillors present allege that there are differences between them and the urban councillors over the issue of devolution of powers. Of devolution of powers. We all know that currently uh, there is a rift between the authority leadership and the divisional mayors. And I think like two weeks back they also went to parliament they petitioned the speaker that the way how work is being conducted in the authority is not the rightful way. Uh, and we, we have tried to engage them, the divisional mayors, to come and have meetings with us. And they have ended up not coming. And Everybody came alone because I came myself at 9 that I was here and I entered in the chamber at 10 o'clock. I cannot tell. Who, who is the problem? What is the problem? We we'll just get an apology for one Kennedy Okello who will give us an apology, didn't come because it's certain exams. Okay. That I was here and I entered in the chamber at 10 o'clock. I cannot tell who, who is the problem, what is the problem. We we'll just get an apology for one Kennedy Okello who will give us an apology, didn't come because it's certain exams. Some of the councillors, including Segirinya Muhammad, a councillor for Kawempe Division, justified his coming late to the council meeting. Because of the incident which happened yesterday at Parliament. Because yesterday I, stay, I had a demonstration about the, uh, the, the, the egg limit campaign. I was badly brutalized by the police. For the Christmas season, to our Christians within Kampala, our churches, our bishops, we were supposed to get Christmas packages from KCC as an institution, and that budget was only going to be derived from this meeting. So it is quite unfortunate, it is quite a shaming, preparing for the Monday, for the Monday feast, whereby the, the, the parliament is going to be discussing the report uh, concerning the amendment of Article 102B. Among the issues at hand include challenges associated with KCCA budget 2017-18. We had very, very important business to handle today, including issues of accountability, how we have performed, how our, our revenues have performed, the remittances from the central government, local revenues, and the expenditure generally. He adjourned the meeting to 10th January in anticipation of having got the required number of members for the meeting. I'm Navka Farida and Gloria Guitabinji reporting. A couple with a child that has an ailment <coughs> with the heart is seeking for financial assistance to take their baby for an operation in India before the end of this month. Okelo Dick and wife Ejaru Patricia are parents to 11 months old Peter Ejaru, Ejura, looking for funds to cater for an air ticket, visas and upkeep for the period they will be in India attending to their child. Though they got a promise of close to 18 million shillings for treatment of their child, Peter Ejura, in an Indian hospital, Okelo Diki and his wife Eyaru Patricia are still struggling to raise funds for air tickets and upkeep while in India. 11-month-old Peter Ejura has a hole in his heart which has to be repaired before the end of this year. Okelo Diki, the father of the sick child, says after following medical diagnosis of their child, they have contacted various organizations and personalities and managed to get a pledge of 5,000 US dollars, about 18 million shillings, from Action for Disadvantaged People. Although this offered a sigh of relief, this young couple has since failed to raise the required amount. Because the family relies on subsistence agriculture and uh, I used to do but I bought a ride people's bike, so I can't get this money at the moment. As it is needed, the baby is supposed to be operated within this month when it's not yet ready one year. Hailing from Kole District, Northern Uganda, Okelo Diki, together with his wife, Eyaru Patricia, 
decided to storm the city last month with the hope of securing financial assistance from well-wishers to facilitate an operation for their baby, Ejurapita. However, two weeks down the road, this family has not registered any success. We tried uh, last month with some of our NGOs around, so we could not get them because uh, most of them they have gone for all their holidays and uh, some of them are telling us the budget for this year is over. So they cannot help me at the moment. Uh, if possible they will help me maybe during the budget of next, next year. And uh, yet this help is needed soon. It is needed now. It is for this reason, therefore, that they decided to come to UBC to air out their predicament, hoping to be listened to and helped. If you have that art, help us to save the baby's life. This condition is not okay. Being a border border rider back home, Okelo Diki, together with his wife, a subsistence farmer, they say they have run out of options to save their baby, but to beg you, our viewer, for assistance. The required amount to cater for the air tickets, visas and upkeep for the period they will stay in India attending their baby is 1,700 US dollars which translates to over 6 million shillings. We started this campaign long time ago. Whether that we don't know where to go exactly, who, to, who, who is supposed to give up, to give us help. Financial assistance can be forwarded to 0779-241165 or 0750-051078. I repeat, 0779-241165 or 0750-051078. UBC News. Baby there needs help. Blessed is the hand that giveth. In a bid to promote agriculture, which is the backbone of this country's economy, farmers have been encouraged to grow drought resistant seeds, use drip irrigation, grow high value vegetables, this to enable retain water in their gardens. This was said during the closing of a three day water for production project training for group farmer leaders organized in Mubende municipality. Almost all Ugandan farmers are involved in subsistence farming, a factor that has made them not benefit from its full potential. Now government is partnering with non-government organizations to encourage farmers engage in both subsistence and commercial farming as a weapon against poverty and hunger. This was during the closing of a three-day group farmers training organized by CK Uganda and Minister of Water. The event coincided with the handing over of 100 water tanks and a water for production project held at Panorama Suit Gardens in Mubende municipality. The coordinator CK Uganda, Laban Rutare, says the water for production project is aimed at availing water to farmers and address the issue of climate change, particularly government involvement in construction of valley dams for animals during drought seasons. Rutare asked farmers always to consider growing drought resistant seeds, use irrigation, plant high value vegetables, among others, so that water is retained in the gardens. We are here in Movende and uh, we together with the Ministry of Water and Environment have uh, a development project which is particularly called water for production and it is to avail water for farmers to address the issues of climate change. Particularly we have constructed, I mean the government and through the Ministry of Water we have, co have constructed valley tanks and uh, then they increase the water uh, for uh, the, the, the animals 
uh, during the dry season and water for irrigation of the farmers' gardens. And we have also trained the farmers in the... During the training, group farmer leaders from sub-counties of Kitega, Kiganda, all in Mubende district, promised to put in practice what they have been trained by mobilizing others. <laughs> Story compiled by Fred Casivante for UBC News. Archbishop Church of Uganda is great standing Tagadi has commissioned 712 youth who were attending an annual youth conference at Seroma Christian High School in Mukono. The conference attracted participants from the Anglican churches of Kenya, Rwanda, Congo and Uganda. The Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, His Grace Stanley Ntagali, has cautioned the youth against homosexuality, indecent dressing and alcoholism, among others. He was speaking to the youth attending their annual conference that was started in 2015. When you have a good attitude, your mindset is transformed, then you can say, I belong to the Lord. I need to dress decently and dress like a child of God, one who is walking in the open door the Lord Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. When you are transformed, your mind is transformed, your dressing code will be, will be transformed. Who put on balance in the West are homosexuals. Because they are, they are fractured by the back, then they put on pampas, and they do not want anybody to see, so they push their trousers down, and that is what we say as balance, and you adapt that as a fashion. So if you are in the West, they will know that you are a homosexual. Ntagali also asked government to intervene and help the youth being treated while looking for greener pastures in the Arab countries. And then, of course, uh, human trafficking is targeting the young people because they are graduates and they have no jobs. And if you are not walking through the open door, you, are, you can't fall a victim. And when they tell you there are jobs in the Arab world, and many of our youth are going there to suffer, to become slaves, women are becoming sexual, sexual, sexual workers, because they go hoping they get green pastures and they suffer. And I want to appeal the government of Uganda to check, because it is now common knowledge. The 10th parliament, I have always said, they should revise exporting labor force because most of our youth are suffering. The youth who apply for jobs and get direct jobs, God bless you. The proprietor of Seroma Christian High School, Dr. Margaret Sechide, called on the participants to take on what they have learned in the conference in a mature way. Maturity is when you accept other people the way they are and their level of maturity, number one. Two, maturity is when you understand that your ideas are wrong. Different speakers, including Bishop Nathan Gasatura from I Rwanda, Reverend Onesma Sasimwe, Chaplain Makere University, and others addressed the conference. Beatrice Lanzwell, Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development staff have been cautioned against engaging themselves in a healthy behavior that may lead them into contracting HIV and AIDS. Minister of State for Energy and Mineral Development, Peter Lukeris, was speaking to staff during a health camp for HIV AIDS testing and counseling in Kampala. The three-day event is part of the World AIDS Day commemoration. The acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Robert Kasande, led members of the staff in the testing exercise. The Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development is conducting a free HIV testing and counseling for its members of staff. The annual exercise is done by the Ministry for members of staff to come, sensitize, share with the community in the fight against AIDS. 
Tasso Mulago is conducting the exercise. Kassande encourages staff to test for HIV because it is important to know their status and acquire the service offered for a better living. It is important that with this uh, exposure to field operations, we are not prone to HIV's scars. Therefore, in compliance with the Ministry of AIDS work policy, a number of HIV AIDS activities have been undertaken with the aim of having a healthy and productive workforce, which will, of course, towards, uh, will also work towards achieving the Ministry's mandate, mission, objectives, and goals. The Minister of State for Mineral Development, Peter Lokeris, says government has procured enough ARVs but advised staff to avoid contracting the disease. The world is working very hard to find ways of getting new drugs and even eliminating those who have been infected. But in the long run, they have not happened yet, but will come. So it's better we begin working very, very hard so that we are healthy to produce what is required for our communities. The Assistant Commissioner Human Resource, Hope Biarhuanga, calls for non-discrimination confidentiality and support to those affected by this scourge. So here we are today and I think I will have to check at the status. I think most of our staff started testing on Wednesday. Yesterday we continued and today is the final day of testing. Our testing group is on. Please let's test and be sure of our status because it means a lot when you know who you are and you can handle the situation before it runs out of hand. Canon Gideon Biamgisha from AIDS Commission and Dr. Watiti of Maldmei graced the occasion. Statistics from Tasso Molago indicate that 400 girls aged 10 to 24 years contract HIV weekly. I'm Navka Farida. I'm Ganga Henry reporting. People with disability have continuously remained the most affected by unemployment compared to physically able human beings. The Chapasan Kasese District Union of People with Disabilities, Joshua Mujenyi, says that there are lots of discrimination against people with disabilities. He was speaking at an event marking the International Day of People with Disabilities in Kasese District. Discrimination amongst people with disabilities has been identified as the main cause for unemployment among them. The chairperson Kasese District Union of People with Disabilities, Joshua Mugenyi, says many people with disabilities in Kasese still face discrimination during the search for jobs and are discriminated against while at work. He was speaking during the International Disability Day for Kasese District held at Renzori Square, Kasese Municipality. Even people with disability are included. For example, on the Public Service Commission, it is imperative and compulsory that there should be a person with a disability. The main reason is for him to cater, him or her, to cater for people with disabilities. Even castles for people with disabilities have been put in place so that they allow the issues of people with disability. The Deputy Resident District Commissioner Kasese Aminadabu Muhindo encouraged the public to be supportive and favor persons with a disability in their fields of education, housing, and job offers, among others. Because now we are able to be heard by the authorities within the district. And then you also be able to. They should establish schools, both primary and second, which are inclusive or which support the, 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 the well-being of a person with disability. The function attracted political leaders, ministers from Obusinga, Warren Zururu, and religious leaders, among others, Susan Naonga and Moses Mokawala. <laughs> Acting Executive Director Uganda Manufacturers Association Chirunda Mubarakankutu has called upon the males to exhibit high integrity to demystify reports that men are abetting the spread of HIV AIDS as compared to women. Mubarakankutu was speaking at a belated commemoration of the International AIDS Day for Nakawa Division that was organized by the Uganda Manufacturers Association.
One thing I learned today is that the males are the one who is spreading uh, this HIV mostly. But maybe as from today, it should be a word to all the males that we should be able and should encourage ourselves to make sure that we test. The good news is, and we heard that a lot today, so much has changed in terms of awareness, in terms of the medical support that one can get, which makes it possible to live a very healthy life, as we, as we could see perfectly today with Supercharger um, and the brilliant um, team that he came with. Um, and we need to use those opportunities because everything is there. We have the awareness, we know what to do. The drugs are there, they're even for free. But they need, those opportunities need to be taken and that's why I really appreciate <laughs>
paying gentlemen who are coming from uh, average clubs because I call them average clubs because I have never seen a free state stars in the last 10 years or last five years performing anywhere in the uh, club championships. A coach who has been in South Africa, uh, I think South Africa cannot bring out the real uh, picture of our football we are playing because we have not even uh, faced South Africa within our last five uh, years uh, in any games, being it uh, AFCON qualification, World Cup qualification. We have not faced South Africa uh, for the last five, uh, five years. So I think uh, this new coach uh, needs some time, but it would be good if uh, we had stayed with our local coaches. It is yet to announce ML's salary and his other expected responsibilities as he takes on the task as Crane's manager. While Uganda Cranes has lost to Zanzibar in the semi-final of the 14th edition of the Sekafa Senior Challenge Cup ongoing in Kenya. The Cranes taking court team's hope of clinching the 15th title of the competitions was squashed by a 1 2 loss to Zanzibar this afternoon. For UBC, Helen Barbara Gizamba. Good news and bad news for the Cranes in the same story. All roads lead to Legends Rugby Grounds on Saturday at Lugogo for the Nile Special Rugby League. Fans will be thrilled with an action packed game when the Cobbs and the Rimula Rhinos will face off tomorrow in gigantic engagement. Both sides have not lost a game in the league and no team is ready to drop points but rather put up a hard fight in the encounter. Cobbs will rely on services of Captain Brian Ashaba, Brian Odong, James Ijongat, Haji Manano and Adrian Casito. While Rhinos, being the team with the best forward, will use Mean Machines coach Oluch, Mathia Socho, Robert Aziku, Otakeyot Brian, among others. In other games, Pirates will play Buffaloes, Warriors will battle in peace, and Tebe Mongas will face Ginger, and Ginger will tussle it out with Epos, and he then square it with Ram. With that, we come to the end of news tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Michael Jordan Lukomwa is my name. With Elizabeth Nakakoni, we wish you the best of the season and a good night. Let us catch you tomorrow. Bye-bye.